Today on Dead Dodge Garage, it's the thrilling conclusion to the series on this broken 318. And the answer to the question, where the heck did all the oil go? Also, it's raining a lot. In the last video on this truck and this blown up engine, I asked the viewers, what the heck do I put back in this thing? And the overwhelming response was 318. Put that stock style rebuilt 40 over 318 in there. It's right, it's easy, and it'll be done this year. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, as mentioned in that video, this engine needs a few things before I can do that. First off, I need to clean off that surface rust there. And second, a set of heads. That's kind of a big one. Also, cam and lifters. Ugh, I might have to reuse those out of that other engine. More on that later. Now, as mentioned in that video, I would have to use the stock heads that came off the blown up engine. I used to have like a pile of good 318 heads, but I kind of scrapped them all. And while I do have some other engines in storage I could go rob, these are here. So this is kind of the way. Rather inconveniently, I've had a whole lot going on lately. So I'm only just now getting around to pulling these and everything else I need off of the dead engine. That's all rainwater because, well, this is still the Pacific Northwest, but don't worry about that. At first glance, one might notice these heads are absolutely disgusting and that's because back in the day, oil changes were extra. They're pretty gross in here too. I mean, I've seen worse, but they're not amazing. But in looking these things over, I think I found the smoking gun. A month or two ago, I made a video about reading blown head gaskets. I never released it. Ah, that would sure be helpful information about now. I actually found quite a bit of evidence to support what I'm about to tell you. This is one of the head gaskets. It was unfortunately stuck to the head. I've found in most instances where the gasket is either like partially stuck or totally stuck, it's probably a harbinger of bad news. There was no exception here. Obviously it got crinkled, I was pulling the head off, which was kind of silly, but clearly those fire rings were damaged and clearly the gasket material is cooked in that area. Notice all that horrible, Staining stuff? It's leading right into the crankcase. And there are matching trails on the block. It's pretty distinct, actually. Look at that. Hmm. It's even more distinct here on the passenger side. You can actually see little fire trails through where the fire ring should have been. It's kind of nifty. For the record, number eight doesn't really have any staining like that. And number four is kind of okay, but two and six, quite bad. And those marks match up well with what we see here on the head gasket. Here's the underside above cylinder two, matching torch mark, four, kinda okay. And here's six. Again, you can see a matching torch mark. Eight seems fine. And here's the matching area again for number two on the cylinder head. You can see here, there's just this happy trail leading right into the crankcase area. Four is kind of okay. Six has that weird break in the middle. Eight's interesting. Note the oil on the spark plug. There really isn't much of that on number four. There certainly is on six, and there is again on eight. When you're looking for a head gasket sealing problem, something you should be keeping an eye out for is a shiny ring all the way around your chamber. On this driver's side head, we don't have that on any of the cylinders. It was lifted through this whole area. Cool. The number seven plug actually doesn't look very oily, but the others certainly do. Now again, this gasket was damaged when I pulled it out, but I don't think the various layers should be just coming apart like that. So both head gaskets are lifted at the top where they meet the crankcase, where the cylinder head meets the intake. So how did that happen? Well, I have a guess. And it's something to do with this. To aid an intake manifold alignment, a factory Chrysler intake manifold has a pinhole here that matches this one. From the factory, there's a dowel pin right there in the china wall, as it's called, to locate the intake. As you can see on this engine, they've been removed. They've been removed on that other engine over there to accommodate for an aftermarket intake manifold, like this tunnel ram, which does not have pinholes. So if those dowel pins are in place, well, you're gonna have a bad time. Unfortunately, this original truck engine still had the dowel pins. 
And as we've already seen, it also had an aftermarket aluminum intake. I'm not mentioning any names here. This is a mistake anyone could easily make. I know that because I've made it before myself. It's one of those things you really only have to learn once. Oddly enough, there actually are holes drilled in this wind intake, but they're in totally the wrong spot. I'm not sure what that's about. But here's where that rear dowel jammed into the intake and cracked it. There's a matching witness mark here at the front. It didn't crack it more than, you know, that little bit there, so that's not so bad. It's probably because at the front, there's a whole lot more going on and it's a lot stronger. The question, of course, is what is that gonna do? And the answer, I think, is exactly what we just saw. For further evidence, here's a look at the intake gasket I took off of this thing. It's got a good crush here at the bottom, but it really doesn't up at the top. Now it did seal, but the raised areas aren't squished the same way. That leads me to believe that the head and intake were meeting at an angle because the head was being pulled upward. It's kind of hard to imagine exactly what would happen in this setup. Thanks to the angled intake bolt going into the head, as you tighten those down, it's really not until it snugs up it's gonna lift that head there. Now, I could be completely wrong. Maybe something else caused this, but it sure is interesting that it's all right in that area, right along the flange where the intake meets the head. And clearly this moved that way for one reason or another. On both heads, in fact. I don't know if the effects of this action would have appeared immediately or if maybe it took a while for the leakage to actually start happening, but you can see the trails where the oil found its way into the cylinders. It just became an oil burner and it didn't stop until all the oil was burned. It definitely goes without saying that I have to clean the crap out of these heads and check them for flatness. I mean, it's totally possible this is a machining problem, but I don't think so. I had been planning to save this wind intake manifold for future batches. Now that I know it's cracked, I'm not so sure. If I do have a problem with those other heads, I suppose I could use these closed chamber 302 heads. That would do cool stuff. Honestly, I'm probably not gonna keep this truck though, and I might wanna use these for something else eventually. I do wanna address some comments I got on the last video on this thing. Yes, I absolutely could save this block, but why? I have like five more in storage, plus the one in there that I'm gonna use. There's just no reason. The amount of work it would take to make this serviceable again, completely pointless. I've scrapped far better engines than this that actually had, you know, crankshafts in one piece. While this may be different 30 years from now, right now, this thing's junk and it's not worth the trouble. There's a really good chance I need to use these. I should probably get them out of the rain, I guess. Anyway, there's your update on the blown up 318. The engine that gave me my third favorite doorstop. You know, I've got just a few projects in the shop currently. Just a few. Uh, yeah. So it might be a bit till I finish this thing, but um, look forward to more updates coming soonish. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. And remember to try and keep the oil in your crankcase and the rainwater out.